mind of Moses, a servant. We have somebody greater than Moses. Is the Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us greater promises than Old Testament promises. And because of the faithfulness of God in every generation, since the promises of God were fulfilled for the children of Israel as he gave it to them by Moses, The same thing he has done for us. He is going to fulfill the promises he made through the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 3 verse 9. The precious promises to the faithful. Galatians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 9. He tells us here, so then, they which are of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Have you seen how God was faithful to Abraham? How God fulfilled all his promises to Abraham. Even after Abraham had gone to the great beyond. God was still fulfilling his promises unto Abraham. In your life, God will continue to fulfill his promises unto you. Have you seen how God fulfilled the promise to Abraham? Anywhere Abraham was, whoever was dealing with Abraham, positive or negative. God always remembered Abraham. Somebody took Abraham's wife. God was faithful. He defended him. Somebody took Abraham's land. God was faithful. He defended him. Anywhere Abraham was, near Sodom, or in Gera, or near Egypt, anywhere Abraham was, God was faithful to him in keeping his promises. Anywhere you go, everywhere you are, God will always remember you. The promises he made, he will not forget. He, his promises will follow you everywhere. So you cannot say, it's because I'm not in such and such a place, that's why I'm not victorious. Victory is yours every time in Jesus' name. His promises will be yours. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 12. First Timothy chapter 1, we're looking at verse 12. And you'll, feel, you'll see that God is a faithful God. Faithful every time, faithful everywhere, faithful to everyone that he calls. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry when he calls us he calls us into ministry he calls us into service and because he calls us into service he remains faithful and all his promises to us to help us, to lift us up, to answer our prayers, to give us victory, and to do every good thing in our lives while we remain faithful unto him. He keeps all those promises without failing. And he's going to do that in your life. He will not fail in your life in Jesus' name. 
in second peter chapter one i'm reading from verse three the precious promises he has given the glorious promises he has given the great and high promises he has given and he's granted that to you once you come to the kingdom and you're a child of god and he says i'm taking you from here i'm taking you to glory every promise he has made for us for your soul for your body so that his goodness will never fail in your life is going to be a faithful god as long as you remain in that aura in that area in that circle of faithfulness he will not fail i said he will not fail i said he will not fail second peter chapter one i'm looking at verse three according as his divine power he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness then he says through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue Look at verse 4 there. It says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That by these, that is by these great and precious promises, it might, we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lost. Have you seen the precious promises there? And he tells us that he gives us those precious promises according as his divine power. According as his supernatural power. According as his heavenly power. According as his creative power. According to the power that belongs to God and God alone. He says this is ours. And you know that his power never fails. And so you can always rely on him, always depend on him because it's according to his divine power. Then, then he said, he has given unto us all things. He has given unto us all things. You'll never be in a situation where you say the promises of God doesn't cover this, doesn't cover this, whether it is secular or spiritual. He has given unto us all things. You cannot say this is personal. He has given unto us all things. It relates to your family. He has given unto us all things. It relates to your personal life of righteousness. He has given unto us all things. He has uh, given unto us all things in your ministerial life as well. Whatever challenge you face in ministry, whatever challenge you face in your personal private life, the promises of God cover every area of life. Secular or spiritual is given unto us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. And then he says, he saw the knowledge that of life in Christ and he gives us glory and he gives us virtue. Then he says, whereby he has given unto us great and precious promises. The promise of salvation, great and precious promises. The promise of sanctification, holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, great and precious promises. The victorious life, the promise of the victorious life, 
whatever the temptation, whatever the trial, you cannot say this temptation is so great, the promise of God cannot cover this. He has given unto us these great and precious promises of victory over temptation every time, everywhere. Some people look at sanctification as if, uh-uh, that's a no-go area. I don't think I can have that. Why not? God is faithful. He has given us the promise of sanctification. The approaching of the Adamic nature. There are some so-called theologians. They say, how can God approach the Adamic nature? They are not thinking according to his divine power. They are thinking according to their own human limitation. He gives us the divine nature. He takes away the nature of Adam, the nature of Satan, the nature of fallen man, and he gives us that divine nature that belongs to the Lord. After he saves you by that great promise, sanctifies you by that wonderful promise, and he heals you of every form of sickness by the precious promises. And somebody says, can somebody be totally free from every sickness on earth? Every attack and every affliction in life. Can somebody be totally free, spirit, soul, and body? He has given unto us all things pertaining to life and godliness. And these are great and precious promises. So that by these promises, you'll be victorious and triumphant in Jesus' name. Then he says, you'll be partakers of the divine nature. And the divine nature doesn't sin. The divine nature doesn't yield to Satan. The divine nature is not weak. The divine nature is not falling and rising. He will give it to you. I said he will give it to you. And then he goes on to say, having escaped the corruption that is in, in the world. Can you escape corruption? Corruption in the office? Corruption in society? Corruption of the dancing halls? Corruption of bribery and all these kickbacks? You have escaped. I said you have escaped. He said, having escaped, it's done already. You will not go back to them in Jesus' name. Let me read those, three, those two verses before we go on to the final point. According as his divine power. Let me ask you a, let me ask you a question. What if you were to read these two verses every day? You wake up in the morning and you read these two verses. To maintain your victory. To maintain your authority. To maintain your triumph. And to maintain your overcoming spirit, the spirit of the conqueror. That you wake up in the morning. You say, this is what I have. This is what belongs to me. This will never fail. This is going with me everywhere I go. I'm going to be victorious today. Victorious over sin. Victorious over sickness. Victorious over evil spirits. 
victorious over Satan, victorious in all circumstances, victorious in every situation, victorious personally, victorious in every attack, every affliction that may come my way, victorious in every changing various or varying circumstances of my life. What if you woke up every morning to remind yourself of the faithfulness of God? To remind yourself of how great and precious the promises of God are? What if you woke up every morning and you said, this is mine. This cannot fail. My God is a faithful God. And his faithfulness reaches to all generations. And reaches to everyone, everywhere that believes on him and takes hold of his faithfulness. And you say, according as his divine power. Not human power. Not your own little power. According as his divine power, he has given unto me all things that pertain to life and godliness. He has given unto me. Not that he's going to give, he's giving me already. It now depends on me searching it out, finding it out, making use of what I have. He's giving us, giving me all things that pertain to life and to godliness. And it is through the knowledge of him, the knowledge of Jesus Christ, who loved you, died for you, and rose again. So that through his knowledge, you are called unto glory and to virtue. Whereby are given unto me exceeding great and precious promises. That by this I might be a partaker of the divine nature. What if you went out every morning understanding I'm going out today, I'm carrying the divine nature inside me? The nature that cannot fail. The nature that is not weak. The nature that will not be falling or rising. The nature that will not be bending and yielding to the past life, to the old life. And then he says, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And every day, you are going to be an overcomer. I said every day, you are going to be an overcomer. I come to point number three now. The peculiar privileges of the faithful. The peculiar privileges of the faithful. God reserves a special place for those who are faithful. They keep a relationship with God and they say, I know God's demands. I know God's promises. I know God's provision. I'm going to be faithful to God in every detail. I've made a covenant with the Lord. When I came to the Lord and repented of my sins, I made a covenant with the Lord. And I am going to remain faithful to the covenant I made with the Lord. Those who are faithful like that, they have peculiar privileges. They have special privileges. They have extraordinary privileges that God grants unto them. He puts you in a very special class, in a separate place, because you're a faithful.